everyone, Arlene here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to today is my second installment in my Bow Making 101 series. <laughs> and I'm gonna be making a 12 loop funky bow in this video. But I'm not gonna be making any old funky bow. I'm gonna be making a funky bow to go on a wreath. Candace uh, got in touch with me last night and has asked me to create a wreath much like I did. I'll put a picture here of the wreath that I made for her, kind of in that same feel. Only I chose some different colors because this, who she wants me to make the wreath for, her door is a gray color, she said. So that brought kind of farmhouse to my mind a little bit. Uh, and so I went to Hobby Lobby and I started looking around to see, I wanted lamb's ear. I knew I wanted lamb's ear for sure. So I picked up some lamb's ear. And then I started looking around, I said, what do I want to go with this? I just don't know. Candace said, it doesn't matter. You pick, you have good taste, you pick. And I'm like, oh, thanks a lot, Candace. I don't know, you know. So then I came across these which have just a touch, you see that, of purple in them to, to mix in with the lamb's ear. And then I found these, which are super pretty. And I don't know what, are these lotus flowers? I'm not even sure what they are, you guys. The Hobby Lobby doesn't ever say they're flowers on their tags, it just says floral. I'm not sure. It looks kind of like. And then we have welcome home. I got a welcome home sign. And then I have the initials to a couple initials to put on it too uh down on the one side but all this is going to go on one side with a funky bow right in the middle of it and then maybe with the welcome home kind of hanging you know at a at an angle i'm not sure we'll see when i go to put it together i'll probably be putting this together later on this week lord willing i need to get it done before christmas <laughs> so i'm just not sure i'll get the the video edited and get it up for you guys i'm hoping to but i don't know Anyway, so think of all these when you think of the, when you see the colors I'm gonna make this funky bow out of. I'm kind of gonna make the green kind of fall into the background, but I picked two purples, two color purples. This one is you can see through. And then the letters uh, are gonna be white, and, but I thought I would pull in this. Remember I got this the other day and, and that? And I thought I would pull in a little bit of the burlap and then some chicken wire. So I think this is gonna make a really pretty bow and it's gonna pull, especially the purples, let me pull the purples up, the purples all together. See that? It's hard for me to hold all this. But anyway, let's get all this ribbon cut and again, I'm gonna come back later in the week with the wreath. So this is just gonna be the bow that I'm gonna make for the wreath. And then I will refer people back to this video for the bow when I go to make the wreath. So, because I wanna get this up for you guys. <laughs> anyway, all right. Uh, so let me turn my camera and get it pointed down. And we're gonna do a little bit of cutting here. All right. So I'm going to cut the, each strip at 24 inches, I believe. I wanna give myself just a smidge longer tails on these. So I'm gonna cut each strip at 24 inches. Put this back a little bit. 24 inches long. And I'm not sure how this is gonna look made up, but we're gonna try it, you guys, and we're gonna see how we can get it to work out. I love this stuff. And we're gonna see if I can get it to work. So 24, now I've got my snippers here to snip this. I'm gonna do three of each of these. So, of each of these colors. So I will speed on along here and get this stuff cut up and then I'll be back and we will make up a 12 loop funky bow. Be right back. show you what I I've learned at Christmas time or when I was doing my Christmas decor I learned that I need to when I'm working with this chicken wire type of stuff that I need to go ahead and pre-bend it before I start working 
with it in a bow for in a bow. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to pre-bend it and I'm going to and I'm going to smush it together right at about five and a half inches so that I can have about five and a half inch loops and I don't even measure the tails, however long the tails, about seven inch tails, six and a half to seven inch tails. So I'm obviously not dovetailing the ends, but I did want to let you know, I did dovetail the ends of the ribbon. Let me get a piece that you could see. And just in case you don't know how to dovetail, I wanted to show you that you just fold your ribbon in half. Now there are two ways to dovetail. Most Actually, people go I from do. the fold and cut down, and that's perfectly fine to do it that way and probably safer for your fingers to do it that way. But I actually do it the opposite direction. And uh, I, I've always done it this way. I fold it in half and I cut up from the edge up toward the center like that. So it is, I, and you don't even have to put a dovetail on it if you don't want to. If you want it to be straight, then do it straight. If you want to ruffle up the ribbon after you're done the, the tails, that's fine too. You just do whatever you want. Do whatever makes you feel better. So anyway, I, I do want to pre-bend these other two pieces of chicken wire, which is getting stuck to everything, you guys, I'm telling you. I'm just folding it as best I can in half and then measuring out five and a half inches, five to five and a half inches, kind of sticking to five and a half here for this bow. Pinch it together right at that point. And one more. Like I said, we're making a 12 loop funky bow. So in this case, I have picked four different ribbons. This I'm considering this a ribbon in this bow. And that's how I get my 12 loops. Each piece of ribbon is a loop. Now I could make three, you choose just three ribbons and do four, cut four of each, but I really wanna do the four different ribbons. Okay, first thing we do is to, I'm gonna pull this down here a little bit, make it a little closer to me here. I have my, tape measure. Okay, first thing you want to do, pick up your first piece of, of ribbon and just simply fold it right in half. And because this is a even numbered looped bow, I'm going to go all the way through the pattern and I'm going to be pointing the loop up from center, which will be my thumb. So it's easier for me to show you as we go. So let's get started doing this. Just fold this right in half, and then I'm gonna find five and a half inches. You can do five inch loops, you can do six inch loops. I wouldn't do much bigger than six, although if you have really stiff wired ribbon, that would make a big, beautiful bow if you did seven inch loop or eight inch loop or something like that. You just, you just have to play with your different ribbons and see what you can do. So anyway, I'm going with five and a half, pinch it together right at that point, and then I'm gonna to go to that back tail, just like I always do, even though this looks like two-sided ribbon, texturally speaking, it can be different. And this really isn't, but it's a habit of me for me to just go back there and, and twist that back tail around to the front. So there's our first loop. As you can see, I have my ribbon kind of laid out in a pattern. And the reason I do that, when you get the bow made, you can mix up the, the loops and the tails but I like them at least to start out going in somewhat of a pattern. That's why I, and it makes it easier for me to remember what I'm doing too. So again, here's the second loop, fold it in half, go to five and a half, pinch it together. At that point, these two ribbons are super stiff. Whew, let me tell you, I go to that back tail. You can see I really need to twist this one around since it is one-sided ribbon. So twist and bring the right sides uh, so that they are facing the same direction. Okay, we go with our next little piece of see-through purple. I love this. Five and a half, pinch it together. And twist. Okay, I'm gonna grab up one of these, and obviously I'm not gonna be able to twist these tails. I'm just gonna put it in there 
and I'm just, I'll just separate the tails when I need to do that. So there's our first four ribbons in our pattern. Next thing, and, you're, and I'm trying to pile them next to one another. This first piece of purple is not one to cooperate. There we go. Okay, now let's start the pattern over. Fold it in half, go to five and a half inches, point it down from center, point that loop down from center, and accordion it in there, pinch it together. Go to that back tail and twist. And we're gonna go through the pattern again. Down from center. And I'm letting that ribbon slide back in my hand. And it's really taking up, you know, pretty much the whole, you know, the whole space between when I have my fingers like this holding it between my forefinger and my thumb, the crook of my thumb. So, and I'm just letting it slide further and further in there and it gets tighter and tighter as I go. Five and a half, point that down. Pinch it together, twist. My second piece of little chicken wire, add it in. Not much I can do with that until I get it all tied together. <laughs> then here's the next one. Last time through the pattern and we're gonna turn that loop up from center again. Trust me, it's all gonna be mixed together anyway. As I said, this is just a way for me to keep track of what I'm doing and to do it in some kind of an organized fashion. Again, up from center, pinch it in there. Last piece of purple. Got one that's really stiff in this pile and one that is really slick. <laughs> I'm setting myself up in this one. And then the last piece of chicken wire. I'm gonna slide it right in there. Alrighty, now get your pipe cleaner. You just need one pipe cleaner. Try to find the center of the pipe cleaner. Lay it beside your thumb. Take one side down the around the bottom, one side up and around the top. Use the hand that you're holding the bow shut with as resistance and pinch those ribbons together as best you can. Get these fingers up as close as you can to the back of the bow and twist. This chicken wire is making this super hard, you guys, sorry. So twist the bow, and that just, each time you twist that bow, it makes it tighter and tighter. All righty. And again, it doesn't look like much right now, but it will in a second, because guess what? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna fluff, 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 fluff. And that is what's going to pull this bow right together. And this chicken wire is super pretty in it, and I think it's gonna catch the sun beautifully, but it is difficult. It is difficult to work with, I will admit, but I think in the end, it's gonna be pretty. I just need to persevere. <laughs> separate these chicken wire tails especially since I didn't separate them. Look at that. Oh, that this is super cute. I like this this chicken wire for sure. It's just likes to grab my sweater and grab my fingernails. <laughs> it's giving me a hard time but that's okay. Also too if I wanted to cut some of them down 
especially the chicken wire ones and bring them up and through like that up and through the loops how's that's cute i like that you know just i need to tell them to be careful don't pin don't poke themselves but there we go i'm loving it let me get both This one piece of purple is wanting to stick up where I don't want it to stick up. And that's another thing. So if it, you got one that's doing something you don't want it to do, that's okay. Yank it and pull it another direction, you know? Make it do what you want it to do. There we go. And of course, I will sit and tweak with this and play with it and fool around with it forever. You know, making it in, to do just what I want it to do. But for now, I think this is making a super pretty funky bow. Look at that, I love that chicken wire. I love it. All right, let me turn my camera around and I'll have some final words here for you in just a second. 12 loop. Funky bow that's gonna go with all this prettiness back here. I think it's gonna be pretty. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, dokie, everybody, I'm back, and I've been tweaking a little bit, doing a little fluffing, and switching around of the written, uh, pulling some of the this color to the back of the bow. See, there we go. Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh. Wow. It's funny when you look at it like that. When I'm right on top of it, it's hard to see. So sometimes that's a good point. Sometimes walk away from it a little bit. Sometimes move away from it a little bit and come back to it and look at it. And then you can, you know, see where it needs to be tweaked. As you see, I just have one of these little flowers that's not glued in there yet. Although the, the chicken wire, I'm telling you, it's catching everything. Be careful if you use this stuff. Uh, but I went ahead and put one of the flowers in, inside of it because I've got four others that I know will go two on either side of it and I wanted one for the center. So I knew I wanted a bow inside of it, but didn't that turn out pretty? Let me get it up close to you. Look how pretty. I think with the lamb's ear and the little touches of purple, I think it's gonna be really, really, really pretty. At least I hope so, because it's a gift, you know, and you know how I am. I always get more nervous when I'm making something for somebody uh, than I do when I'm making stuff for myself, because I want it to be perfect, you know? And of course, there's, there's nothing perfect in crafting. There are no mistakes, only unique creations. <laughs> right in crafting but anyway regardless there we go that's a 12 loop funky bow isn't that pretty i tell you it makes a big statement you guys it does make a big statement i'm not sure if i'm going to add some tails on it when i do the wreath but we'll see when i get the wreath going what i end up doing with that i did want to let you know if you guys are watching this after christmas of 2018 check the description uh, for a link for the wreath because I'll put a link in this description of this video for the wreath that I'm going to put this bow on. Also, in that wreath video, I will put a link for how to make this funky bow. So, you know, those two videos will be intertwined with one another. So, but anyway, <clears throat> I'm super happy with how this worked out. Yes, again, Chris says this is my new favorite word. It is a bit of an eclectic mix of colors and textures, but that's what I like about it. I like it to be different. I want it to be unique. I want it to be something that somebody else might not have thought of to do. I want it to look different on her door. You know, I want her to, to, to know that she has an original design, you know, and that's why I chose these, these different colors. So anyway, before I close, I did want to mention a couple of more things, again, about the funky bow. Remember, the most important thing about a funky bow is to keep the loop size consistent throughout your bow. You can have tails as long as you want. You could cut your strips at all different lengths and have different lengths of tails, some that you might want to hang down already when you make it to begin with. But just make sure that your loop 
sizes are the same when you go to make your bow. That's important. Also about wired ribbon. I always use wired ribbon in my funky bows. Now I know there are some who don't and that is perfectly fine, but for me, I like to use wired ribbon. And again, it's a personal choice. If you don't wanna use uh, wired ribbon, by all means, don't use wired ribbon, you guys. Make the decisions to, to incorporate what you want to incorporate in your funky bow. I'm just trying to give you a little template to go by. All right, <laughs> I'll close this one out for now and say that I hope that all is well with everyone and that uh, I hope that those of you who are suffering or struggling with a chronic, with chronic pain or a catastrophic illness, I hope you have someone there with you, taking care of you, spending their days with you, helping you get through each day, helping you make the very best that you can out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or where it should be. I love you all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around. And I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And remember in crafting, there are no mistakes, only unique creations. 12 Loop Funky Bow. All right, uh, the next one in this, this series will be a 16 loop funky bow. Uh, but before that, it'll probably be this wreath that goes with this funky bow. Because I need to do that before Christmas. <laughs> anyway, with all that said, I'll just say until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye. <laughs>